it's Cindy. Welcome back to Studio Lou. So I thought today we might do something a little bit different and um, we'll make some Rorschach style paintings that could be used on the cover of a journal or as an interesting page in the journal. It could be used as end papers. So if you're not familiar with Rorschach um, or ink blot uh, drawings, um, essentially they are Historically, they were created by um, a psychologist named Herman Rorschach, um, who had theories about the way that people would sort of um, determine, like whatever they thought they were seeing, how they were interpreting these drawings would tell you a lot about their personality. It had been also kind of like um, not fully debunked, I would say, but he, he passed away before there was any like scientific credibility that was really given to um, this methodology, although it is still believed in by a lot of professionals in the psychology industry. It is still used. Um, I have no, I have nothing to say about the validity or the lack of validity therein, but it, it isn't, I would say, a mainstream. Um, so, however, I think it is a really beautiful way to create art, and I think it's a really cool, like, study in symmetry and has a lot of opportunity for just easygoing, kind of fun which is exactly what I'm in the mood for on a Friday afternoon um so yeah this is the prototype that I did I showed this in my weekly wrap-up um so in order to create this you will need water you will need sort of either a fan brush or just um like a wide brush that you can control the amount of water to just be able to lightly wet your page um watercolor paper or canvas paper um, or a canvas if you want to do it on a, on a canvas like a piece of canvas that you can fold it can't be mounted on a on a board yet like on a frame because we are folding it in half you will need um, a selection of different paints if you have them acrylic works well tempera will also work um, if you're doing it with kids because it's a you know a safer option um alcohol inks, acrylic inks. Um, they allow you to add some fun bleeding, um, but they're not necessary, I would say. Um, Posca pens are a game changer. They really help with small details. So I think that's pretty much the whole supply list that you'll need. So yeah, my, my thoughts on this is that it would be very cool as a page in a journal or actually as a journal cover, you might want to lay something underneath like a second piece of paper to catch the excess, um, alcohol ink. Um, but yeah, I, I think there's a lot of uses for these. I think they'd be really nice end papers. I, I love anything with symmetry like this and it's a really chill project. So let's get started. So I'm just going to use this um, fan brush. This is just a, um, a Simply Simmons fan brush, um, size 8, and some water in my little painty cup here. And then I'm just going to run it right across my paper. Oh, I forgot to mention, where did I get my inspiration for this? So Liz Tran is the artist, and she did um, an instructional video for the Blick Arts uh, YouTube channel. It is like a few weeks back, but um, I really loved watching it, and she's an incredible artist. She's really cool. I will I will link the video, and you can you can find both uh, the Blick the Blick. Uh, YouTube page, but also you can find um, Liz Tran. She is amazing. She does very sort of multimedia layered cool art. I forgot I need to fold the page first so I know where my line is. You can do that before or after you get it wet. It doesn't really matter. If you're using watercolor paper or a heavier mixed media paper will also work. Let me just move up a little so you see my whole page. Um, okay, so now the fun part. We can get started. So I'm going to start today with some teal because that's my favorite, the teal and aqua range. This is um, acrylic. Uh, I have no idea where this came from. It's deep turquoise. I have no clue. Could even be the dollar store because every time I see acrylic paint, I pick it up. Um, or sorry, not acrylic paint, but um, turquoise paint. I probably have 500 shades, 50 shades of turquoise in this house, not gray. So there's one blob. Um, then I have to open this paint. This is um, a neon paint. 
give it a little shaky, shaky, shaky. Sorry if I'm shaking everybody and everything here. There we go. So this is like um, a Deco Art Americana Neons Scorching Yellow. So just do a few different size. Um, we still don't have enough shaking. Sometimes these paints really need a lot. Goodness. Okay, so just do a few different size little blops here and there. Um, and a few different colors of acrylic. I did not shake all these before this video, so sorry. And make sure you put some of them toward the center, right on the line. Okay, now we need a little bit of contrast. And this first bit here, um, the other thing, um, focus on just one side. Don't put on both sides, just the middle and one side. It's much more effective. And try to think about like maybe butterflies when you're doing this. Think of what a butterfly looks like, what their wings look like. That could kind of give you some inspiration for colors. I'm just kind of using a lot of colors that I like. And this is just the first layer. You can do as many layers as you like. This black paint is old, old. It is licorice um, folk art acrylic. And look at that yuck. It is so old, I need to use it up. So that's why it's here. <laughs> okay, then what we're gonna do is just fold it quickly. And I'm working on my um, mixed media glass mat today. So oops, so this is why I'm working on my mixed media glass mat because you might get a little bit of seepage. Hopefully not too much. Try not to get like big amounts like that are squeezing out the sides. But some is okay because that means that you're getting to the edge of your paper. Okay, so there is layer one. Now you can look at this and feel like there's things that you like and things that you don't like. You can psychologically interpret it <laughs> um, and then go and add more paint. This one I think must be, must be empty. Oh yeah. It doesn't even want to squeeze out. I've got some old paints that I put, I, I just grabbed them specifically to try to like use them. Yeah, I don't think there's much gonna come out of this. Maybe a, an old goblin that has lived in there for a long time. It is a cool color though. It is, um, um, wicker white, but it's totally green. That's funny. I've obviously mixed it with something. Yeah, I don't really think these globbies. Oh, there's a big giant glob. Let's maybe mix up a little. I just want to try to use a little bit of this old paint. Okay. <laughs> don't do what I do. Do as I say, not as I do. Okay, Um. so I'm just going to actually snatch a little bit of that back up again um, with my handy dandy ink wipe which is over here. Sorry. Okay. Cause that's a little, that's a little excessive in one spot there. Booty do come here. Okay. The other one I'm just going to go with, I don't think it's really going to spread all that far cause it's paint from the 1920s or something. I don't know. All right, so that's that. Um, now let's go with a bit of purple. I'm gonna plunk some purple right in the middle. And apparently right there too. And then just look for somewhere that maybe looked like you put a little bit of paint and it wasn't thick enough. Like up here, I've got this kind of feathering, which I actually don't hate. I think it's fine. If you're really happy with a section like this that you've done, except that the paint is too thin, just go ahead and put another blob of the same color in the same place and uh, you'll get more obviously of the same blob color. The only thing I can tell you is you do need to work a little bit fast with this um, just because um, acrylic paint dries pretty quickly and when you're doing this you might find that um, the paper can stick and tear if if the paint is too dry and you keep you know pressing it down and pressing it down but if that happens don't worry because you can actually just um add more paint right on top of it so that old paint left sort of a ooh, 
sort of a booger. Okay, let's get rid of the booger. <laughs> Just keeping it real just keeping it interesting here okay so I think I'm almost there with my blotting <clears throat> I want to do a few more I'm gonna put one here of this amazing this is like a really nice pink um, royal fuchsia and it's Americana put some in the middle of there maybe a little teeny blop there and actually maybe another one right there then uh, some of this more mustardy yellow again. I want to put some more of that. Maybe where these two meet. And then maybe here as well. And then I like it over here too, maybe. I usually do the big blobs, then the little blobs, and then the accents. So when I'm pressing this down, I'm trying not to move the whole piece of paper. I got a little bleed out there. I'm just trying to, um, you know, like sort of medium firm press down, but I don't want to like squash or anything. And I definitely don't want to slide my paper around. Okay, so I think in terms of blotting, I'm done. Um, let me just get the little... You can actually go back though if you find little things are imperfect and you can add more paint just to kind of correct them. Like if you're looking for certain, not imperfect, but if you're looking for certain spots to be covered that aren't or you think it needs more color, do as many layers as you like. As you like. Just be careful with the dryness level of the paint. So I really love what's happened here. You see like this almost almost looks like a, a scientific drawing of an insect or something the way that the paints have reacted with one another so um now we can add a bit of alcohol ink and i have a bunch of alcohol inks but just for the purposes of showing you today i'm not going to get them all out um i'm just going to use the basic three um from this kit of tim holtz um alcohol pearl so this is the pink one from that group and I think it needs another little with alcohol ink you really need to make sure you shake them up and just kind of look at them and make sure that your color isn't trapped in the bottom okay so I'm gonna throw some there and maybe here and you'll see it reacting on top of that acrylic paint it's like bubbling like it's so neat. And then when you hit the paper, it, it acts differently. Okay, so there's the pink. And then I'm just going to try to hurry because like I said, it ink actually dries pretty quick too. Um, oops, I didn't shake you. Let's just do a quick shake. There we go. And then the green. So this one's a little busier than what I normally would do. Um, I think just because I'm trying to show you how fun it is. There we go. Okay, so then again, now you'll see that ink, it soaks through the paper. So if you're using a lot of inks, you might want to put another piece of paper down underneath, or obviously if you're working on a surface that you care about, cover it up. Okay, there we go. So that, um... That is fun. I like it. There's a lot of cool. Those pearls are almost like a little metallic-y and I like the different ways they bleed. Um, lots of fun. I'm just looking to see if I got any weird like peely up paper or anything. It doesn't look like it. If I had, I would show it to you. Um, okay, so next what we can do is just grab Posca pens. Now this one's a lot more busy than my my other so this one you see I was able to kind of go in do little dot circles around and kind of add like detailing with this one I think um, 
it'll be a little more like a little more difficult to do that now with the Posca pen you're not trying to make a mirrored image like by folding you're actually if you want it to be the same you're gonna have to draw um, sorry a little eyelash there you're gonna have to draw those dots in the same places and also with alcohol ink you'll notice it's lighter on one side than the side that you applied. It doesn't transfer the same way. So if you want exactly kind of what you did, drop it in the same place at the same time. Um, I don't care really. I mean, I don't. If it's on the paint, you see it transfers more, but if it's on just the paper, like you'd want to kind of go back. Let me see if I can just demonstrate my point. So the weak spots are here and here and here and here. Oh, in here, because that's where I laid the uh, the green down and it wasn't directly on the paint. It was on the paper. So I didn't get like a mirrored image. So there's also, I see one right here with this pink. Um, I think that's it, but I can see quickly. I'm not like going to obsess about it. Again, if you're not using this as like a framed piece, it really doesn't matter. You're not going to care as much because you won't even see that symmetry. So I think what I'm going to do is just um, outline a few dots here around the green. Because that's one place where I feel like it's nice to um, add something. And then just be careful you obviously don't stick your hands in the paint. And then I'm going to add, um, let me just push it down here. I want to add some dots around this bright pink. And I'm just trying to kind of mirror somewhat what I'm doing on both sides. Around the blue. Um, maybe go in with a little bit of yellow. Oops, sorry. Oh, I actually haven't even started this yellow marker yet. Let me do that. <laughs> it's funny. I can't believe I haven't even activated this marker. This takes a minute or so of just kind of pumping the paint into it. If you've never owned Posca pens before, this is uh, one of those things. Here it comes. I see it coming now. You'll see it start to kind of creep down the pen. You, you see like that, it's on its way. Okay. There we go. Now, maybe some yellow here. And this would also be really cool with like encaustic on top, like painting with wax maybe. You could do so many things. I recommend looking at the work of Liz Tran. You'll see how she works in like so many layers of this kind of like colorful multimedia. It's really nice. Okay, there's yellow. And black. I just want to add kind of one slightly bigger dot right there. So leave me a comment or tag me on Instagram if you do this. Um, Studio Lou on Instagram. Just tag me. Um, I'd love to see your your Rorschach playtime. It's really relaxing. Say if you don't have much to do this weekend, do some Rorschach. It's fun. Okay, 
I think I am good. I think that's fine for the for the purposes of this video. So like I said, you know, fun end papers, book covers, you name it. Um, you know, you could like do an experiment and try to make your friends tell you um, what kind of emotions they have when they're looking at your piece and then you can try to like do a fake reading of their emotions <laughs> and tell them something illuminating about themselves. Um, so thank you so much for joining me today. I had fun. It was a nice little afternoon like playtime. So if you try this out, let me know. Tag me on Instagram or leave me a comment on YouTube and link me to wherever you are. If you have your own channel, what have you. Um, so thanks again. All my information, social media is down below in the description box as always. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks guys. Bye.